Thank you, Mr. President. I want to join my colleague from Hawaii, Senator Schatz, uh, whose reasons for avoiding a shutdown were ones that we all share, but whose state also has suffered a devastating uh, fire uh, in, in Maui, and where we in Vermont have suffered a major flood uh, this summer and need FEMA aid. A couple of things I just want to say. Number one, I want to express my gratitude to my colleagues in the Senate who have come together, Leader uh, Schumer, Leader McConnell, bipartisanship, where we have a way and have passing a bill to keep the lights on, to keep government functioning. No good comes out of a shutdown, to quote Senator McConnell. And like Senator Schatz, I've been through it before. And as Senator Schatz has said, when you ask the folks who literally explicitly favor a shutdown, what's next, they don't have an answer and don't seem to think they need to have an answer. And we do. The consequences of a shutdown are really devastating in large ways and in small ways. A shutdown means our men and women in uniform don't get paid. Seriously, we are going to condone asking people who are protecting the safety of this nation to do it without pay. That's what shutdown advocates are saying. It's no big deal to them. On some small things, I got a letter from a Vermonter whose heart has been set on taking his family to a hike in the Grand Canyon. And I don't know if any of you have ever done that hike, but you have to go on the website. It's almost like a lottery and hope that you can get a permit to hike. He got a permit to hike and camp for two nights for his family. And that's, I think, on October 5th and October 6th. We're shut down. That family hike is not going to happen. And you know what? That's cruel. It's such a wonderful thing that this family is going to enjoy our Grand Canyon. They won't be able to do it. But I want to talk specifically, too, about what happens to Vermonters. And this is a situation, of course, Senator Schatz and Senator Hirono share with Hawaii. We got hammered in this flood. FEMA has done a tremendous job. The FEMA fund needs to be replenished because as a result of the low amount of money in the FEMA fund, they've had to cut back on their efforts of recovery that have already been promised. Just yesterday, the Washington Post reported that FEMA is delaying $2.8 billion in disaster aid to keep from running out of funds. They have to have some money available if there's another event that requires immediate response to save lives. We understand that. That's the right decision for them. But it has real consequences for us in Vermont. Repayment of these long-term recovery projects that are being halted aren't from last month. They're from last year. Just think what that means for my state of Vermont, who's in the throes of recovery now. FEMA's transition to immediate needs funding has paused 13 projects in Vermont, totaling about $7.5 million. As of September 15th, Vermont has incurred $291 million in flood-related infrastructure damages. And we're needing over $160 million from FEMA and $131 million from the Department of Transportation. On top of that, the state has estimated that it has incurred $225 million in damages related to FEMA public assistance activities, $75 million for FEMA uh, uh, personal assistance hazard mitigation and 468 I'm sorry, 406 mitigation activities, 48 million for severely damaged or destroyed residential property mitigation or buyout program, 20 million in damages related to FEMA individual assistance activities, and 11 million for the minor residential damage repair program. And you know, it's, again, it was so reassuring to me that Republican colleagues approached me and said, Peter, we're going to be there to help you because we know there, but for the grace of God, goes the, my state. Thank you, colleagues. There's a, but there's a small group in the House that has this notion that it is no big deal if we literally shut down government. Well, it's a big deal for those folks in Vermont who need FEMA relief. It's a big deal for those men and women who serve in the United States military services when they won't get paid. And it's a big deal for that family that wants to have this dreamed about hike 
in the Grand Canyon and won't be able to do that if, in fact, we're shut down on October 5th and October 6th. So thank you to my colleagues. I believe we're going to pass a bipartisan bill. Bipartisanship is the only way you can avert a shutdown in, uh, for us to have an opportunity to negotiate other issues down the road. And I uh, yield back, uh, Mr. Chairman, or uh, Mr. President, and thank my colleagues for their assistance in our effort.